Hi, this is Gary. I've got the new iPhone 3G. So let's go and take a look at it on this episode of MacMost Now. So the lines here in Colorado were incredible all weekend. I checked several times a day, every day, and it was never shorter than three hours. So I went in line this Monday morning bright and early and was able to get eighth in line and get a new iPhone. Now they were out of the black iPhone 3G's in the 16 gig version so I got a white one instead. Anyway here's the box and it comes with the iPhone sitting on top usually and then inside is a little manual and you get the dock cable, the earbuds and a great new power adapter that's really small and built for travel. Now missing this time is the dock. Now the dock wasn't very useful as you can just use the cable by itself to sync with your Mac but it was useful because it had an audio video jack in it. So it's unclear whether the old docks are going to work with the new iPhone. Certainly the same is not true the other way around. I'll be testing out my old dock with the new iPhone to see if I can use that to get audio and video out. So the new iPhone looks exactly like the old one except there's a little more space between the screen and the edge and the screen's a little more sunk in. I've heard that the touch glass and the LCD screen are actually separate elements on this device so it might make it a easier, little easier to repair. Now the back of course is going to look very different. It's white or black. The old one was silver with a strip at the bottom. One of the best features about the new design though is the headphone jack which is flush with the outside which means you can plug in any set of headphones or a line in for your stereo or for your car. Here's a better look at it. Now this is one of the biggest features for me. I mean I've had so many problems over the last year because of that recessed headphone jack. Every time I got another adapter I seemed to either lose it or have it in the wrong place at the wrong time. There were plenty of times when I was wandering around with a set of headphones, my iPhone and no way to connect the two. So I'm glad they took care of this. Now one of the other big features is of course the GPS and I went out and I tested this right away. From inside the building here it basically didn't get any GPS signal I figure because it only gave me this general area which I figured it got off of the Wi-Fi signal from my local routers. But then when I stepped outside it very quickly without any action for me zeroed in my location. It just took a few seconds and then instead of a circle it became a blip. And suspecting that this was a live connection I went and started walking down the street and sure enough the blip kept plotting where I was. And it looked like also if you use directions it will update the directions as you go. So I won't tell you the directions but at least it will update the list of directions as you walk or drive. So the GPS seems to work great. I'm looking forward to some better apps being developed. Specifically an app that just tells you the basic GPS information so you can use it for something like geocaching. Right now you're sort of restricted to using it in a few social media apps, some apps that tell you where local restaurants are and the Google Maps on the main screen. Actually it would be great to have a geocaching app. One that not only looked up the information at the geocaching website but also went and showed you your GPS location and helped you hone in on where these caches are. If you don't know what geocaching is check out geocaching.org for a fun game that you could play hopefully with your new GPS iPhone. So the other long anticipated feature of course the 3G chip inside the new phone. I intentionally turned off the Wi-Fi on the phone and just tried to use the 3G network to surf around to sites I usually go to on my iPhone. And yes it was a lot faster. I thought Edge was pretty fast here in Denver but 3G is even faster. So that's going to be a nice feature that just gives me slight benefits over the next year. Of course an anti-feature of the new iPhone is a slightly new shape. If you look at it it's got kind of a bump in the middle and the edges are slightly rounded differently. So my otter box was not able to fit. I tried a couple other cases that I had lying around. They weren't able to fit. I was able to get one rubbery case to fit it just fine but it looks like you're going to have to buy a new case for this. And with cases running 30, 40, even 50 bucks that's an extra expense you have to take into account. So there's a rundown of the changes between the 3G iPhone and the old iPhone. There are several good advantages to this phone but it's still a hard sell if you already have an existing iPhone. Until next time this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.